Charlotte Bellis is our correspondent covering the elections for us in Kabul. Those comments, from Mr. Mattis, Charlotte, have we had any chance to gauge how they are being received by Afghans? Because they've heard this kind of thing before. We have heard this kind of thing before. I think what's what's really on Afghans' mind is is how concerned they are with with kind of 18 hours to go before these polls. Uh, is will they vote or not? Uh, is is the real question that they're worried about? In Kandahar, as you said, the elections have been delayed one week. This is the statement from the presidential palace saying that after this attack yesterday, that they have talked to people in Kandahar, they have talked to the election commission, and they just don't think it's appropriate. They can't ensure people's safety. So that's going to affect six to 700,000 voters tomorrow. This attack yesterday has really shaken people, especially in Kandahar. It was a meeting of top officials, top US officials. Uh, General Miller, who's the top commander here in Afghanistan, Afghanistan commanding all US NATO forces was in this meeting. He escaped unharmed, although two Americans were hurt. And also Afghan uh, top officials, the intelligence chief was killed and the police chief was killed. His name, General Razak. He is much loved. People across Afghanistan, even changing their Facebook profile pictures today to his face because he had fought the Taliban so fiercely for the last 20 years. He'd survived many attacks uh, and he has died in this gun battle yesterday. His military procession, his funeral, has just finished. Thousand people out on the streets, regardless of how dangerous it is in Kandahar. They came out, police officers, his subordinates, wailing on the streets, so distraught that somebody they regard as such a hero has been killed. And for the voters who want to exercise their democratic rights, it's another reminder that in Afghanistan, when you go to, an, when you go to the polling booth, you can be literally taking your life in your hands because you want to be able to cast a ballot. Indeed. It is a very, very real question. And, and people are saying, well, it, to the point that what time should I go to vote? Is it less dangerous to vote at 7 a.m. when they open or after prayers or, or as they're closing? What is the safest time for me to, to take this chance? Uh, the Election Commission is really trying to reassure people that please trust us. We, we have taken precautions. We were at the Election Commission compound this morning as they were loading up dozens of trucks with all the polling materials, heading out into the 550 polling centres across Kabul, and they were... I've never seen anything like it, how heavily armed. I mean, there were commandos, police trucks, guns everywhere to protect these polling materials and try to create some type of confidence that they can ensure security, not just here in Kabul, but across the country. The fear, though, is that it may suppress voter turnout. And we talked to one family in the western suburb of Dashti Bachi, it's a sheer minority area. They have been hit particularly hard this, this year by ISIL attacks, more so than anywhere else in Kabul. And they said, beyond the safety and the security issues tomorrow, the attacks have just made us feel like the government doesn't represent us. They're not protecting us. Uh, and, and because of that, we will not vote tomorrow. Here's their story. A teenage girl's bedroom, void of life. This red chair is where 17-year-old Rahila sat to study. She was top of her class. She was killed in an ISIL suicide attack at her school in August, along with 34 of her classmates. This watch was how her brother identified her. I miss those moments, yes. That I'm hoping that uh, if Rahila was alive, uh, I would make her more happy. They live in Dashti Bachi. It's a sheer neighborhood in western Kabul. This year, it suffered a series of ISIL attacks at Rahila's school, mosques, a sports club, and an election registration center. Beyond the 180 people who died, it's killed their belief in the government. My father told me that I'm really not interested in this election. And I myself also, I'm really not interested in this election because we have lost our hope from this system, from this government, from this m member of parliament. Afghanistan's Shia minority has been overrepresented in parliament. They hold 20% of seats, and yet they say they feel forgotten and vulnerable. Some have even self-armed, creating their own militia. ISIL is the biggest threat in Shia neighborhoods. Fighters have flooded into Afghanistan after being defeated in Iraq and Syria. They are trying to kill as many civilians as possible and as many of the Shia minority here because they want to create a sectarian rift and use that to their advantage.
در صورتی که میزان مشارکت مردم در کل If the general turnout, especially of Shia Hazaras, is less, it will show that ISIL is winning. Yes, there are families not voting because they lost loved ones. But on the other side, some people are more engaged and have suggested candidates to represent them. But for people like Hamidullah, the damage is done. Then I cannot cry at the home, so I go to the top, the rooftop. So I cry some for some moment there, <laughs> then I come back. The silence echoes from her now empty room to what's become Rahila's library. Hamidullah built it in the last six weeks. In the top floor of their mosque are 4,000 books donated from fellow Shia. They say where the government has failed them, education will succeed. When I came here, I feel Rahila was in here. Even she uh, was in here, but I feel she is here. Politically, they will be silent, but Rahila's presence is deafening. I wish you would be alive here now. So, so, so incredibly sad, that story. And it is, uh, it is a far too frequent story uh, that we hear. And there will be a lot of people in Afghanistan watching stories like this, hearing stories like this, watching the attack yesterday going, will I be another Rahila simply by exercising my right to vote tomorrow? Charlotte, thank you.